lecture on risk factors of methamphetamine use for college students in the U.S. Someone relating to using Ritalin as a child. I know without managing and training a proper control regimen, I know that without managing um, my daily doses, I can be in a psychosis, which is, like, in other words, being crazy if I don't take my medications in a proper state of form. Uh, and to justify, justify my belief, I know that time management is critical for people with ADHD and college students as well. First off, a brief history of how methamphetamine came into the U.S. market. Methamphetamine synthesized in 1944, um, patented in 1954, was first marketed by Fuji Pharmaceutical Company as Ritalin. It was first initially used in 1955 for a number of indications. Those include obviously ADHD along with depression. Methamphetamine are considered first-line pharmacology therapy for the treatment for the treatment. Uh, I'm sorry, of ADHD. All stimulants work by increasing dopamine levels in the do brain. Dopamine, which is a chemical associated with pleasure, movement, attention. The therapeutic effect of stimulants is achieved by slow and steady increases of dopamine, which are similar to the natural production of the chemical in the brain. The doses are prescribed by physicians. They start low and increase gradually until the therapeutic effect is reached. Adderall, Ritalin, and Concerta are the name brands that are used for ADHD, a disorder that affects approximately 5% of university-aged adults. Although prescription stimulants are meant for only treating ADHD patients, the increase in prescription rates has raised some public health concerns between um, abuse potential meds and non-medical use of prescription stimulants references a problem among young adults in general and college students in particular. For university students, it is difficult to maintain a high GPA, which is a great per point average, and given students' propensity to attend school full-time, volunteer, and work all at once. It is a uh, rise um, to get non-prescription methamphetamine in the U U.S. and along with other countries as well. When students have midterms or finals, the term academic doping is what happens. It is a term that refers to the use of brain enhancing drugs such as amphetamine and methamphetamine in order to improve mental alertness, focus, or information retention. People use these drugs or doing so, like I said, without prescription. For people with ADHD, these medications give an extra boost to calm the mind and focus on the task at hand. For those with the ADHD, Ritalin, and Adderall, they have a sh um, sharpened brain and an extra boost to study for exam or to cram off a paper. While it is most prevalent on university and college campuses, it is now being seen in high school students as well and high school campuses. Although we don't know for sure how students are getting their hands on these prescription meds. It is most likely from friends who have um, got the prescription legally and they just stole it illegally. Approximately 6.4% college students are using uh, methamphetamine illegally. Since study drugs are over the counter, students who use the drugs recreationally without a prescription can get in serious legal trouble if they are caught using or distributing. Some get the drugs mainly from the dealers, but also from friends with, the, um, with prescriptions. Currently, methamphetamine is controlled by the DA by its assignment of Schedule II status, which means the drug has a high potential for abuse and may lead to several psychological and physical dependence. All of these drugs are indicated in the treatment of medical conditions. Schedule II medications are the second medication, hardest medications to legally obtain. Large doses of stimulants can lead to psychosis, seizures, and other med serious medical problems. When combined with alcohol, stimulants may create a sensation of less drunkenness and euphoria, which can lead to excessive drug and alcohol consumption, possibly resulting in overdose and death. Taking stimulant medications illegally can lead to a number of negative side effects, including insomnia, anxiety, depression, strokes, and diarrhea. Methamphetamine excuse me, can be transformed from a therapeutic agent to be abused and addictive substance when this drug is taken in excessive amounts and used through intranasal and intravenous routes. When used intranasally, methamphetamine has receptor effects similar to those of cocaine. A rapid release of synaptic dopamine occurs, producing subjective effects of an instant high intensifying gratifying euphoria. The psychiatric effects 
of methamphetamine are quite similar to those of cocaine and amphetamine. So a person using cocaine can experience nervousness, restlessness, agitation, suspiciousness, paranoia, hallucinations and delusions, impaired cognitive functions like driving a motor vehicle, delirium, violence, suicide, and homicide. Finally, is academic doping simply another way to gain an advantage in a time when due to economic instability, every advantage counts? Or is it mortal, dangerous, and either form of cheating? Until universities start moving towards a better work-life balance or start implementing anti-academic doping policies or administrating urine tests at the beginning of the exams, the decision to take brain enhancing drugs is ultimately up to the individual. In order to prevent accidents from happening, information and education must be sent out by each university that has interest regarding stimulant prescription drugs, like I said, methamphetamine. As future studies are still waiting to be conducted, but nonetheless, statistics seem to indicate that recreational use of Adderall and Ritalin, Concerta, are college, on college and university campuses is on the rise. Thank you for listening to my presentation.